Okay, folks, welcome back. This is lesson two of November or the third month of the ICT mentorship. Okay, we're going to talk about institutional order flow and what makes it easy to see. And we're going to be building a little bit on what we just mentioned in the previous lesson. And we're going to be using that euro dollar example. And here's that uh, order block we showed earlier. We showed in the lesson one. You see the open comes in at 151.97 and the low comes in at 51.45 and the low, I'm sorry, the high comes in at 51.51 and 51.43. So very sensitive there. The idea is if we see this on a monthly chart, okay, we can go into the marketplace and anticipate an ideal scenario to unfold in this area here. Okay. Now I'm let's drag it right up to the low because it ain't that big. Okay, so we have that low to the opening price. As we mentioned in lesson one, we discussed that there was going to be a high probability of stops resting below these lows down here. What I want you to focus on is look at look how the bodies of the candles basically merge at that same general area. I want you to ignore the wicks. Okay, ignore those. And by having that in mind, all below these lows in here, there's going to be a large pocket of liquidity in the form of sell stops. Now, if we're looking at the monthly chart like this, and we think that there's going to be a high level of sensitivity up here. Why? Because it's already come up and closed in this range by coming up to this level here. And if the market is most likely going to trade lower and seek the liquidity below these lows in here. Now, again, for your notes, when we're looking at institutional order flow, the idea is thinking like that market efficiency paradigm. Okay, you're the market maker. So what you're looking for is where is the maximum level of liquidity in relationship to where markets have traded from and where they are presently. Well, the market has traded higher here. So where's the highest level of liquidity from this point here? If it's going to go higher, it would be above here. But we had this void that we closed in. So the market has now rebalanced from a point at which they sold first. It moved quickly away came back up and closed in that range that created by all these down black candles. So in other words, the market has delivered price going down. It has to close in that gap by trading it on the upside. So where, forever, wherever there is a black candle, there must be a green candle. The idea is you want to see where the market will reach for, for its next level of liquidity. We have the run down here, clearing out these stops. Market clears those stops, and then once it clears those stops right below here, in other words, all this movement over here, all this running of stops, yes, it moves back to a order block, but we're not talking about that now. We're talking about how the market will seek liquidity. The market will run up from this point here because it's already absorbed all the liquidity down here, and yes, just for completeness sake, it's returned back to a bullish order block over here, which is the down candle rate for the up move. So the market's going to do what? It's going to seek the liquidity on the upside. So where does that reside next? This up candle. That's where they sold the last time. And look, we created another liquidity void. All these down candles. Okay. All black candles down. Okay. So there has to be the market offering on the buy side. They offered it on the sell side. So to balance it, there has to be green candles or up candles in this case. Okay. I All my down candles are black and all my up candles are green. So we have that same element just repeating itself here or here. Okay. Now, obviously, we always look at the middle of the up candle, mean threshold, and you can see how the bodies of the candle respect that. There's always going to be this extra little run on price with the wicks. Okay. And I've mentioned this in many, many instances over the last six and a half years teaching Forex online that you're going to have to allow that. Um, 
erroneous price action where it will rat, you know, run farther than uh, you probably would expect it to because of your broker. Okay, so they allow them to open the spread up a little bit more. So when price trades up, it hits this area of liquidity. Now, where are we going to be expecting to see price trade to? Well, the largest area of liquidity would be resting below these lows, right? Or this low, rather. Look closely. Just like we showed over here with the bodies of the candles, okay? We're going to look at the bodies of the candles here. Okay, so classic technical analysis will say, well, this, this wick is the low. And what I teach is it's the bodies of the candle is where all the volume is. The institutional volume is a difference now. The wick is always going to be directly related to retail. Okay, retail stops because we're looking at a retail platform in most instances. You're going to see the wick is generally comprised of retail pricing the bulk of the bodies close to the interbank prices you're going to get so we allow the wicks to provide us a erroneous price delivery or extreme price delivery but we want to do most of our analysis around the bodies of the candles so what does that mean it means that if we have the bodies of the candles defined here as the real low and allowing all this to be viewed as retail if we scrub that over to here, you can see how price trades just below the bodies of the candle, as it would in terms of seeking the truest form of volume from an institutional uh, order flow standpoint. If we're not going to break the range on this run here, and we'll teach about that in the mentorship, but for now, we expect it to close in the range here just as well. We saw this up candle here, this down movement. Price comes up and closes in its range here. Then it runs for the liquidity below here. The point of what I'm showing here is once you understand where the market will most likely reach for, and this is a monthly chart, now we can take a step back and say, okay, if I can define the market in terms of, and we'll say, for instance, say, say we were lucky. OK, we were really plugged in, we were studying, and we felt that this market was topping out up here. OK, and we knew that once this low was violated here, we would have a potential range of that. Clearing out this consolidation, stocks will be resting below that. OK, we would see reasonably expected to run through that. We also know that we have a bullish order block right here. Now notice it wicks through that, but the body of the candle, this body's candle, oh, I'm sorry, this candle's body rather, trades right into this candle here. Okay, so that's all it's required to trade into bullish order block. Now it's a monthly chart now. So we can expect some expansion through and to run the liquidity out over here. Look at all the wicks. Okay, the wicks are no significant barrier in terms of institutional order flow. We just know that there's going to be a large reason to expect stops resting below the wicks or inside the wicks let's, let's say it that way but below the bodies of the candle okay so what we're seeing is we're seeing another area at which we have price trading from the buys of the candle we drag that all over here you can see price trades into that area right in here as well so it's seeking the liquidity below all these bodies of the candle and the wicks and recapitalizing this order block here. You can see the bodies of the candle. Look out, respecting that. All the bodies stay above this candle's bullishness. Now, we would reasonably expect to see price trading down to that level at that point. If... We see this willingness to want to be recapitalizing this bullish order block and we clear out the stops. The next area would be what? To see price reach up into the void, which is up here. So we would see price want to reach up and, and capitalize this price level. So we have an area at which institutional order flow is bearish till we get down to here. Then where is it going to do? It's going to look for liquidity on the upside. This is the 
area which you would expect to see price to want to run up into. So as price is rallying up, this is all bullish. So institutional order flow is bullish here. Then once it gets to this point here, we're looking for what? The stops below these lows here. So we would see institutional order flow swing to the downside. Now notice what's happening again. The bodies of the candles are just violated with this down candle here. We clear out the stops. Okay, and again, we mentioned that it's rechasing back into this bullish order block. From here, where would we reasonably expect price to go up to? Again, that's this bearish order block. So you want to see price reach up to here. So in this instance, we would expect to see what? Price rally up into this area. So all through here, institutional order flow is bullish. Now, I can keep doing this back and forth, back and forth, and, and show you example after example. But what I'm showing you is from a monthly standpoint, you take the information I'm showing you here and by example, and again, here's the bodies of the candle, not the wicks. It stabs through it to go below the bodies of the candle. It doesn't necessarily have to go through the wicks. We only need it to reach below the bodies of the candle. Okay, so while we have institutional overflow that's bearish when it's in the red area, okay, all we're going to do is internalize the marketplace like this. So if we have it set up like this on a monthly chart, all we have to do is break the market down into a weekly, just changing it into a weekly chart, okay? So now we have the price shown in weekly basis. All, all through here, we have the market in a selling condition, market's in a bullish market condition, bearish market condition, bullish market condition, bearish market condition okay so now what we've done is we've mapped out this entire euro dollar from mid 2008 all the way to mid 2012 just by understanding what the monthly levels on institutional order flow will give us and understanding those points of reference i showed you in september what to focus on because that's the, that's the recipe for all the trading you're ever going to want to do. That's it. That's the secrets. Okay, but you have to find them on the higher time frame and arrive at where the higher time frame charts are going to seek liquidity. Because this is where the large funds have their money, and where the large money is found on the fund level, that's where the banks are going to reprice to. It's not for the retail people because you're too small. If we're selling or expecting bearishness in here, okay, this decline sees a retracement back up into, and yes, it wicks through. It wicks through, but the body of this candle is where you'd be looking to be a seller, but this wick never violates this up candle. So we have a bearish order block, retraded to, and expands lower. Price creates a down candle here right before this up move in a, in a time where expected institutional order flow should be seeing price move up into that bearish order block. Right there is where you expect to see buying in an area at which bullish prices should be expected until it gets to this level here, which is that monthly bearish order block we've shown on a, on a monthly chart, then price would be reasonably expected to go lower to seek the stops below these candles down here, the bodies of these candles. And that's what you see here. But look how the, mar look how the market provides us an opportunity of real crystal clear uh, delivery of price where we see price repel, it breaks down. Okay, when does it become apparent that it's going to go lower? See this candle here, 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 here? This last up candle, that's the last green one. When that candle is violated right there, right here on this black one, now you're going to be expecting price to expand on the downside. Price does it here, trades a little bit lower, then we have a small little retracement higher. What's it trading back up into? This down candle, which is a breaker. What's it breaking? The highs. Here, where initial sellers would be having their buy slot resting. And then we clear those out and we go lower. But this down candle is where they're going to populate new selling. Right there. And you can see them selling it right here. So they're mitigating the longs they use to buy the price higher. They, make, they take those orders off, and then you see the acceleration going lower. All this area in here, 
Okay, we have an up candle, down move, retracement back up into what? What is this? Bearish order block. So with this bearish order block, okay, bearish order block right in here, trades up into it and it immediately sells off again. What's institutional order flow reaching for? The stops below here. But why is this signal forming here? Why is this pattern forming? Because it's undoing the buys that was used here. Remember the down candle is a bullish order block and they should be buying there. And it does, look at this, boom, explodes. This sell, is unwinding the longs that they put here. Everything is a hedge on the, in the bank level. Okay, when you're seeing price move from one level to the next, there's all buying and selling going back and forth in between those two range extremes. Range extreme down here, range extreme up here, then there's another range extreme here, another range extreme here, another range extreme here. Okay, so in between these two extremes, there's going to be hedging. There's going to be bookmaking where the, the bank can have a, a net bearish book here and be making money as it's going lower but they have to be buying too and while they still may see price going here and selling they have to take the orders off that they used over here that are long and that's your, that's why you're seeing that unwinding right here everything is going to be the opposite side go over to the left side of the chart and you'll see whatever they did to go long they're going to take that off on the sell side okay which is the, the basis of a market maker sell profile which is what this is, it's consolidation, return to consolidation, accumulation, reaccumulation, smart money reversal, low risk short, uh, and, and redistribution, another redistribution, and the market reaches be uh, below the consolidation here, taking out those stops. Once the stops are cleared out, they're going to look for another layer, layer of institutional order flow for the opposite side. Okay, so that's going to be in the form of the return back to this bearish order block, which we've shown on the monthly chart. The market trades up into that level here, but between the point at which it hits here and once it creates the run on the stops over here, we would be in a bullish institutional order flow environment. So we would expect to see the market trade back into down candles to be rebought. In other words, new buying should be seen there. This down candle right for the up move, you can see the price in here. Two candles wicked down into this candle right here. From the high down to the middle of the candle, it wicks into it here. And this, it's kind of hard to see it, but that candle's low comes in at 2151. So 2151 is below this candle's low, so it's down here. And you can see that's what I'm highlighting right there is the low. And it's inside this down candle. So it's buying and expand, expand price higher. Then we have a retracement. Okay, price retraces. Trades into what? This up candle. So what's this? They sold here. The last up candle is they sold. Why did they sell there? To drive price below these lows in here. So there's your uh, your run on stops. So the up candle they used right here to get sh sellers below the marketplace with their sell stop. Why would they want the sellers? Because their sell stops become market orders to be a buyer. Counterparty too. So where it's the sell stops below these lows. They will activate them and buy them. Smart money will buy it up. Once price trades through that, it'll come back down and trade right back into the last up candle. Why are they doing that? Because the shorts that they have on, they have to take those off and mitigate them. So this wick down to the body is a mitigation block. So price comes down, hits that level here. The shorts that they used when price was going up, remember smart money sells as it goes higher. Then he drove it lower to run the stops. Price trades through that candle right here. But their orders are underwater now as it's up here. So when price comes back down, trades in that same range from the high down to the body of the candle, they can take those shorts off and buy them. And then you're going to see ex explosive price action. Why? Because it's going to be buying a cover on shorts that are here and then buying more for new net long position. And you'll see expansion aggressively and you see that here. So now you have down candle right before the up move in a time when institutional order flow suggests prices should be bullish while we're in that shaded area. Price trades down into the bullish order block. New buying should take place and expand up. Now, when we've seen buying down here or would expect buying in here, the reasonable expectation would be to see price trade up to this up candle first. That's your first objective. 
then above this high for stops, and then expansion up into closing in this range here into this bearish order block, which is its last up candle. Comes back down, buys, bullish order block, expected to run through here, and then back up into the uh, monthly bearish order block. And it does that handsomely here, sweeps it out. And then we see what? Price break down again. How do we know it's going to be bearish? Because it breaks the last up candle at an area where we would expect to see bearishness. Breaks it here, comes right back up at the bottom of this up candle, retrades to it. You can be expecting downside movement in price. Price starts to break lower. One more time, retrades back up into this bearish order block for good measure. Breaks down. Now it's going up. It's going to go lower. Trades up. One more time, works that same bearish order block here. Finally gives up the ghost and trades back up into this high here. Price rate uh, trades lower. Reaches for the liquidity below here. Below the bodies of the candles over here. Over here by reaching down. And then, ultimately, reaches below these lows and back down into the bull shoulder block right over here, which is what we're seeing here. So if you start with your monthly and you break down into the weekly chart, we can go down to a daily chart now. You can see a lot more definition on the daily chart. Bullish candle, which is the bearish order block, because price drove lower, retrades right back into the bearish order block right here. Bodies respect in the middle of that up candle, sell off. Market creates a bullish order block, rallies through, clearing short term highs, retrades back down into the last down candle, bullish order block, rally, down candle, propulsion candle, rallies up, small little drop down, hits the exact high of that candle here. High comes in at 28.02. The low on this candle comes in at 27.95 into this body's candle. I'm sorry, this candle's body. Rallies all the way up into bearish order block. Now again, we're in a blue shaded area. So while on the daily chart, it's dropping lower, 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 lower. The institutional order flow on the monthly is telling you to get ready for a buy. So we get down to these levels in here, expect to see some buying, but we have to wait for price to want to show a break above a short term high. We see that short term high violated here. So now we know buyers are in the market again. Wait for it to come back down into that monthly bullish order block. We see it trade in here. But now look what happens. This down candle here rallies away, comes right back down into it. Now on a daily, see the daily here? Hits that bullish order block. And then look at the react look at the reaction, it expands quickly. Now we have this down candle. Draw that out in time, buy it here, buy it here rallies up this down candle key following institutional order flow the high is 34.36 the low is 3423 right into this down candle again buy it again boom explodes keeps going higher and higher and higher goes into consolidation Every new buying finds a down candle. You go right back to the previous down candle here. Buy it again. Price, price rallies again. Price dips back down into what? This down candle here. Buy it again. The down candles in here. All one order block. Halfway point through that. Right there. Boom. Buy it again. Rallies through. Keep in mind of the monthly and weekly order blocks. As we're seeing it again in here. You see the response, boom, it rallies. That's why you don't see anything over here. Notice there's no bullish order block in here. There's no, uh, any any kind of point at which you would see, oh, that's a, this is what that would be. No, it's found on the weekly and the monthly. That's why you see this response here. Price rallies away, comes back down, trades into bearish candle, which is a bullish order block. And then this one really did it. it traded right into uh, the low 4626 into this order block right here. It rallies again. You can see the shaded area we had again from the monthly. It rallies again, explodes up into monthly bearish order block. Last up candle right here, this one, when it violates that, does it here, expect to see bearishness, wait for it. Boom, it breaks. So when price breaks down, you're gonna be waiting for a return back to a either a breaker or a bearish order block.
or you can look for a stop run on an old high. So we're in an area where we expect to see markets continuously moving lower. On the daily chart, we can be using all these old lows to see price reach for them or expand down. So institutional overflow is suggesting lower prices, especially from the monthly and the weekly. Now we're in a daily chart time frame when the uh, institutional overflow should be weak or bearish. When the market creates a return back into a monthly order block here, it becomes a mitigation block on the daily chart because now we're unwinding what was used to be bought here, which is a breaker. What is it breaking? This old high. That's what we're seeing it right here. You can clearly see it happening here on the daily chart, but it was seen on the monthly and on the weekly. All through here, all through here in this red area, every single time the market creates a new bearish order block, or if it creates a run above old highs, we see the old highs here, runs through them, sell off. Old highs in here, runs above it, sell off. Old high here, runs above it, sell off. And we also have bearish order blocks. Last up candle right before the down move, sells off. Last up candle right before the down move, retrades back to it, sells off. Last up candle, even in this sloppy mess, Right to the body of the candle right there but now we're in a bullish area on institutional order flow and you would expect to see all these levels which are being found on the monthly and the weekly look at the sensitivity that you see on the daily now we have the last down candle here right for the up move price trades into it here and it's on a higher time frame order block down candle here as well buy it again buy it again price explodes Look at the sensitivity right there. Again, this level was arrived at on the monthly and weekly. And look at the responsiveness you see in price. And what's it reaching for? Liquidity above the old high. And a bearish order block on the monthly. So what you're doing is, is what institutional order flow is, it's the seeking of large institutional liquidity. And it's going to be found on the monthly and the weekly. And you see that being traded into on the daily. That's why I tell you on the daily chart, and again, this is why we're looking at daily. Uh, the daily chart will always seek the fund level institutional order flow. In other words, the stops that are found on monthly and weekly charts. You're going to see all your signals to have the greatest magnitude, the biggest moves that take place are always going to be found on that monthly and weekly basis because that's where all the large whales are. Okay, when I say whales, I'm talking about big funds, large funds, okay? And when they have money at risk, that's where the market's going to go because that's orders that they can counterparty with. The banks cannot counterparty with you and I. We're just not big enough. Even collectively, we're not big enough. But the funds, because they're controlling billions and billions of dollars, and they're, that's where the money's at. So if you can find the levels on the monthly and weekly chart, keep them on your, on your daily chart, you'll be able to see all these major shifts in price that sometimes jump off at you after the fact and you wish you would have known they were coming. Um, now you know how to see them by transposing them from the monthly to weekly into the, your daily chart. If you do your trading around these levels, you will see – Every significant price swing that ever transpires on price, you'll see them coming before they get there. And you'll also know, relative to institutional order flow, where the stops or liquidity is above the marketplace. When you're ready to buy it or when you expect a bullish scenario to unfold, you'll already know where the market should be reaching for should it take off and start trading higher. When it goes up to a, a level of resistance or some kind of bearishness, before you even sell short, you're going to know where it's going to be reaching for, which is a sell stops below the recent lows or a bullish order block. And by having that idea how the market will continuously look and seek liquidity, it's not our liquidity. It's not our stops it's looking for. It's looking for the stops found on the monthly and the weekly and daily because that's where the whales reside. That's where the large funds reside. And that's what pushes price around. Understanding that that's why the market will go to these levels because it's wanting to take those participants either out of the marketplace or draw them in as counterparties to their intended purpose. Either being a buyer, counterparty to sell stops, 
or to be a seller counterparty to buy stops. And that's the nature of institutional order flow. So with that, guys, I wish good luck and good trading.